Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Frugalissima. My name is Sam and this is where I talk about all things sewing. Today is my plans video for So Frugal 22. Just in case you missed our live Q&A last Friday, I'll give you a quick recap about what So Frugal 22 is about. This is a challenge that Ruan and myself set up for the sewing community. Essentially what we're asking you to do is to find a free pattern Sew something from your stash during the month of March and the reveal day is on the 31st of March. So it's quite simple really, it's just a challenge that anybody on Instagram can join in. We're just asking that you do use free patterns and that you do use fabric from your stash. So that fabric from your stash, that could be meterage of fabric, it could be remnants, scraps, could even be an old duvet cover or perhaps something that you're wanting to upcycle, something that you've made, such as this dress here that I don't wear anymore, you could upcycle something like that. So this year we've got over 70 YouTubers involved. They will be bringing on a video twice a day. I'm on today along with Lexi from Brunchy Girls and hopefully they will be bringing you free patterns to inspire you to make something. And we're all just asking you to take a deep dive into your stash and pull out a piece of fabric that you maybe have been avoiding sewing because it's too precious or maybe you've just bought it from a remnant bin and you've never known what to do with it, something like that. So the hashtag is sofrugal22 and if you do want to post something that you're working on or you want to post your fabric or your pattern that you're working on, if you can use the hashtag sofrugal WIP, WIP, work in progress, on Instagram, that's fine. It just makes it easier for us when we're actually drawing the contestants at the end of the challenge. It just makes it easier for us to find if you just use hashtag SoFrugal22 for your entry on the 31st of March and then use the SoFrugal WIP for any other time. So we've opened it up this year to include all garments. We thought it would be a little bit more inclusive by including all garments. Everybody can join in then. You can sew for yourself, you can sew for somebody else, you can sew for your husband, not your dog. <laughs> uh, we are asking for actual wearable garments. It can be a wearable toile though, if you wanted to make something to see whether it fits that's absolutely fine. We've got lots of prizes, I'll talk about those in a little bit, but we've got also a free pattern that's exclusive to the challenge. It's the Florence Boxy Tee that I'm wearing here and the link to it will be down below. You just need the code so Frugal Tea. Essentially it's just a very cropped t-shirt, it's got drop sleeves, you've just got a little cuff on there, no neckband to sew, it's just turned under. Fantastic instructions and she's got a little video tutorial t showing you how to get on and how to do that nice and neatly. Uh, Donna at Size Me Sewing is the pattern designer. Uh, if you've not discovered any of her patterns before, I do encourage you to go and have a look on her website and have a look and see what she's got. Like I say, the instructions are really good, really clear and there's a YouTube tutorial as well. So that's a little bit of a freebie that's exclusive. It's normally to be paid for as this pattern, but it's exclusive with So Frugal Tea. Donna has a unique style of sizing patterns. If you can see there, she just used this shape. So I used this circle here and this is uh, for a 97 inch, no it's not, it's for a 97 centimetre bust. I'm usually 96 centimetres, so that was close enough for me. And she does say just go by your bust size. So that ranges from 82 centimetres up to 127 centimetres, which equates to a 32 inch up to a 50 inch chest. Really simple pattern is this, and I will definitely be making another one, probably throughout the challenge. So we've got over 30 sponsors with over 40 prizes for this challenge. It's not judged. Anybody can enter, regardless of your sewing skills. And I'll show the graphics of the sponsors whilst I'm talking. We will post specific prizes on Instagram. These graphics just show you the actual sponsors, not the, what the prizes are. But I might come back in March and do short videos just highlighting each prize. Maybe if they are a pattern company, I might highlight some of the free patterns that they've got as well. So let me know if that's something that you want. I'm thinking of doing it on YouTube Shorts, but I'm not sure about YouTube Shorts, whether people bother watching them. My, my audience anyway bother watching them or not so let me know below otherwise i'll just do a quick five minute video saying this is a prize and these are the patterns that they've got on offer i've also got two discounts for you as well so before i start i want to mention those the first one is the printing discount that we had last year for the frugal frocks challenge that was 20 percent off your a0 printing at fabricate murfield that's the shop that i work in not my shop <laughs> don't get commission. That is just one time only, you can only use it once throughout the challenge, but you can print off as many patterns as you want using that code. We do post internationally, but it might not be worth it depending on where you live, so just check on the uh, international postage prices. The code for that is so frugal 22 and the other little discount that we've got is from Pattern Union 
and she has given us 50% off her Edith smock. Now it's usually retails at 18 Australian dollars does this, which is a request to about, about £9 I think. So that's half price, so it's about £4.50, £5 UK, $6.50 US. So again that's so frugal. So yeah, it's a zero waste pattern is that. Unfortunately you won't be able to use it for the challenge because it's not a free one. But the nice little gift for Sarah to share with us is that. And she does have a lovely free pattern on, on her website called the Phoebe Freebie and that is a jumpsuit which I'll come back and talk about another time. So as I mentioned earlier, the challenge was really popular last year, so we've had to put on two vloggers a day. So we didn't select the vloggers, we just put a call out onto Instagram and onto Facebook, and they said they wanted to join in. So they will be entered into the draw, same as anybody else. That's only fair. If they post a finished garment on the 31st of uh, March, they will be into, entered into the draw as well. So hopefully with 70 vloggers, we're going to get, we've got, people from all different backgrounds, different countries, different shapes, different sizes. We've even got a, a young man, Adam, has done a video for us as well. So hopefully with that you will get um, all sorts of different videos coming. So, so far we've had people talking about plus sizes, we've had people talking about using up your scraps, but people talking about menswear. So yeah, hopefully you will get all sorts of different perspectives for ideas. But we also hope that you'll discover different pattern designers as well. So I think we all get a bit stuck in our ways with pattern designers. But hopefully you might find a pattern designer that drafts for your body uh, or your lifestyle or your aesthetic that you've never discovered before. I've created a playlist of all the vloggers that are involved this year which will be linked down below. You can access that anytime. I'm updating that daily. Yesterday we had uh, Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door. She was looking at uh, how to mix wovens and knit fabrics together. Really interesting video. And we had uh, Lisa from One Lisa Show. She had some lovely fabrics that she was hoping to use. And today hopefully we've got Lexi from The Bruncher Girls who's doing a video of the same time as me. She's from Australia I believe and uh, she usually sews for her, her girls I think so you might get some children's patterns from Lexi. I don't know because I don't know what anybody else is, is doing on their videos. And then tomorrow it should be Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery and Anita from Sewing Yogi. So hopefully amongst all those you've got a few new vloggers to watch. Right so on to ideas for my challenge. <laughs> I did a little poll on the community tab. I had over 300 people voting, so thank you so much if you took the time to vote. The options were size inclusive patterns, patterns that didn't require printing because I know that that can be a barrier for people, beginner friendly patterns, and then I asked people to specify garment types. So the one that won that poll is size inclusive patterns. So I'm going to be looking at size inclusive patterns, but also I will be talking about printer free patterns as well because the one goes in hand in hand with the other a little bit. So if you've watched any of my videos before, you will know that I do regularly feature free patterns. I always try to mention size range. Might occasionally forget, but I always try and mention uh, size range because I do know how frustrating it is when you see a pattern that you fall in love with click through several times and find out it's not for your size. So in the interest of keeping it brief, this is not a fully comprehensive size inclusive video. I did ask people to sort of keep their videos brief, so I better keep mine relatively brief. So I can't share every single pattern over a certain chest or hip size. So I've had to narrow it down just to five or six patterns. Obviously I'm going to be sewing something for myself, so it's got to be down to what I've got available and fitting with my lifestyle and my aesthetic as well. And at the end of the day it's got to be something that I make that I love and that I want to wear. It's important that people are making things that they're going to wear to me. So I'll just hold up the fabric that I've got, that I've pulled out, that I've thought I would talk about today. So yeah, some of them I've, I've had in my stash for a long time, some of them are upcycle projects, and some of them are sort of been there for six months, something like that, but they're all, all stash fabrics. So I'm going to start off with a new free pattern that came out just yesterday, Thursday, from Peppermint Magazine. Peppermint Magazine have lots of free patterns on their website. There is an option to pay for them, but you don't have to. It's nice if you can, um, but you don't have to. So this is from a designer called Hubba Ding, which you possibly haven't come across before. She did used to be called If Kim Wore Clothes. I had a bit of an upgrade autumn last year. So this is a reversible tent dress. So really interesting dress is this one. You can have the buttons down the front or down the back and it's got the really big flounce at the sleeve and then it just 
uh, comes under the bust and then you've just got this huge gathered skirt on it. So quite a dramatic one. It is designed for wovens is this and nice and comfortable and cool to wear maybe if you're looking for something for holidays. I wouldn't call it a tent dress, I'd call it a buffet dress, but I don't know, I don't know what the difference is. So yeah, it'd be nice if you could visit the Hubbarding website, she's got some really nice designs there. This is the only free one that I'm aware of. So this one is designed for sizes A to M, and it goes from a 31.5 inch chest up to a 57.5 inch chest, and then it goes up to a 60 and a half inch hip so there's about 40 inches of ease in the hips of this one so it, it is pretty size inclusive and on the lower end as well it, it goes down to 31 and a half inch bust it is designed for woven fabrics they've used a gauze fabric from Spoonflower for this one unfortunately it's not available for download until the 10th of March isn't this one but in plenty of time for the challenge I think because I can't download it at the moment and have a look I don't know how they've done the pattern but one would hope that the large gathered skirt part is just a big rectangle and they'll just give you the measurements of that and you don't have to print all that off because that would be a really quite a costly printing job with that. They've done that in the past as Peppermint magazine, they've just given you the sizes so for the, the flounce around the cuff and the gathered skirt one, one would hope that they've got the just the measurements for that. So I can't do the download and see how much fabric you will need but I think you probably need about three metres or more I would have thought at least three meters I don't have any three meter lengths of fabric in my stash apart from this um what used to be well it is still a sari until I cut it up um, I got this on eBay uh, several years ago I got three three or four of them I think already cut cut up two and made something from them but I thought this one was really pretty it's got little flecks of gold in it the only problem with that is that it's quite narrow and I don't think I will have enough for that but it's just an option if I can have a look and have an, I've got enough for that. The other option would be this Maya dress and top from Daisy DIY. So this is a draft it yourself pattern so it's just essentially taking your own measurements and I think that's a good way of getting your garments to fit you or to get thing, things to loosely fit you. Taking your own measurements and drawing out rectangles there's a scoop for the neck and there's a really good tutorial for that one. So you're not probably not going to need as much fabric for that one because you can do a top, you can do the dress, there's a couple of tiers in the dress uh, but you're probably not going to need as much fabric for that one. So I could either use this sari or I've got this little ditzy print here. I bought this to make a, a vintage dress. I think I've got a metre and a half of this one but it is full width so it might work out better. It'd make a nice floaty loose fitting top and it'd be nice for summer. The sample that they've used on theirs is a really lovely Liberty Tana lawn so if you've got some Liberty Tana lawn waiting to be sewn up because I think we tend to keep those as a bit of a precious fabric that might be a nice option for you. So if big voluminous dresses aren't your thing, why don't you check out By Hand London? They've got several DIY tutorials on their website. There's this wrap skirt with a ruffle uh, around the hem, and that's what I was, th I was thinking about for this upcycle. This is a walkaway dress that I made ages ago. Never wear it. The bust points are really pointy on it. <laughs> I just feel a bit like Madonna in it. So I've never ever worn that. I made it years ago. And then I've got some other gingham similar to it uh, and this again was a dress that I never wore I started cutting this up for something for my granddaughter at Christmas so that's in bits already so that could go around the edge might be a bit bonkers for me I'm not sure or I could find uh, I've got a smaller scale um, gingham as well and I've actually got some of this left because I think it took about five meters of fabric so I've got some of that left as well in my scrap box so that is the little wrap skirt that they've got on there. I thought that was really pretty for a summer skirt. They've got a full circle skirt tutorial on their website and you can do it as a full circle skirt or a half circle skirt. You just put in your dimensions of your waist and it works it all out for you. So that's based on a half circle skirt is a wrap one and then it overlaps. So it might take up a bit too much fabric for upcycling, we'll have to see. So that one caught my eye. They've also got a caftan on there and they've got the uh, sort of like a bardo sundress, something that I've made in the past, not from that tutorial, but from another tutorial. But the one that really caught my eye is the sheared 
dress with a sheared bodice. This again is just rectangles, just using rectangles, the sleeves are rectangles, the dress part of it's rectangles just sheared at the top and then there's just like a little ruffle at the bottom and again I, I would, I've gone to a wedding in um, Spain and I thought that sari dress in that would be really nice actually. So it's probably more likely going to be the By a Hand London sheer dress than it is going to be the Peppermint magazine one, simply because of fabric constraints and it's more, more my style to be a bit more fitted. The tutorial for the By a Hand London one is in their Instagram story highlights, but quite straightforward I think, it's just a case of hemming and just doing the uh, shearing. If you've never done shearing before, lots of tutorials on YouTube for doing shearing. So that's that one. So finally in the draft it yourself options, if you're not a dress fan, uh, the Stitched Sisters have got a dungaree pattern and that is very similar to the Lucy and Yak dungarees that are very popular in the ready to wear and I made myself the Hey Day dungarees by Waving Some Wild last year and didn't think I would like them but absolutely love them. They aren't a million miles away so if it's, if it's something that you've been considering it might be a good opportunity to test it out with a old duvet cover or something like that. They've made theirs full length but there's no reason why you can't make it as a, as a play suit. So the tutorial, it is again just taking measurements, they show you, they walk you through how to take your own measurements and do your tutorial on how to put that together. I've got a pair of Camille trousers from Sew so Over It that are made as a toile and they're really long in the, in the crotch and I'm wondering whether I could get a, a play suit sort of, you know, shorts version of that for, for my holidays out of these. I really really like the fabric and it would be it's an awful shame that they're not getting worn. I've got a lot of lot of fabric in them and it's like it's it's not quite a denim and it's, it feels like it's got a biscuit in it. Something I pulled out of a remnant bin a long time ago. So that's another upcycle idea. Either that duvet cover because obviously something like dungarees and these voluminous dresses are taking up quite a lot of fabric. So that's it for your draft sheet yourself. One inclusive pattern company that I found that also drafts for height because I don't know if you like me, I'm quite tall and I tend to remember to lengthen the, uh, either the trousers or the skirt and then forget to do the sleeves so this is all done for you. That's Sinclair Patterns. They've got the Harp Cardigan and that is our, actually on my make list. I've got some fabric here, it's just a, a black French Terry because I'm really in need of a black cardigan. That I've had about six months. So there's that really versatile cardigan in different lengths and what have you. I've made it a couple of times, really easy pattern. Or they have the Valley Skater Dress. Uh, again that's designed for knits. I don't think I've got enough knit in my stash to make this but I thought I'd just mention it because it is drafted for heights and it is quite an inclusive pattern. So you've got a couple of neck variations, a couple of sleeve variations, you can go sleeveless and it's got pockets. The dress is actually pleated, that goes from a 31.5 inch bust up to a 59.8 inch bust, has cup sizes up to an E cup and has a maximum hip of 63 inches. And like I say, you can go small, regular or tall without having to make any adjustments yourself on that one. Do need fabric with at least 50% stretch and 20% vertical stretch. So if I was to make it, I could make it in this French terry possibly, might be enough stretch in that but I don't wear black dresses <laughs> so I've not really got fabric in my stash for that one but I thought I'd just mention it. So Free Sewing Org is another resource that I thought I'd share with you. This is essentially a sewing pattern library that allows you to input your own measurements. You get the pattern exclusively drafted for yourself, completely free. It has been designed for designers, for sewers and for web designers as well. So at first glance, this website might look a little bit odd to somebody who's used to sewing pattern companies or sewing designers. It does look a little bit unusual in that they've not used the traditional drawings. They do look a bit cartoony in a way. So I'm gonna share my screen now and talk you through it a little bit. So it's been developed by Yves van der Kock and what you see are drawings rather than life mo models really. And then there's some that don't have a picture at all, which is a little bit odd, I found. But if you click through on the icon, you can see if someone's made something, then there are pictures of people actually wearing the garments. So there's not a huge amount of patterns on here at the moment, uh, but I think it, there's enough to make it an interesting proposition. 
you need to register uh, for an account for the make to measure part which is a straightforward process but if you really really don't want to register and put in your own measurements there is an option for the casual visitor just to click on a size you just need to say whether you've got breasts or not and uh, then measure your neck unusually and then it will give you an approximation of something that's close to your size so First of all, you decide on a specific garment. You say whether you've got breasts or not. Then you need extra measurements if you're a female because we've got more curves. And then there's a little graphic there to help you with each measurement. So you don't need 120 measurements for, for every garment. So if you look at the Warrelly pants that I have clicked on here, it tells you that you want a crotch measurement or something like that. So there is a little graphic there showing you exactly where to measure. So I thought that was really useful. So there's also a little graph when you're putting in your measurements to highlight if there's any potential sort of deviance, anything substantially different from, from what they think it should be. If your hip to waist measurement is usually bigger or smaller than normal it might highlight that that's just to, to make you double check basically so i thought that was a good idea you can then save all your data so you don't have to re-input it next time obviously if your weight fluctuates then it's a good idea to update it every now and again so then you just click on the box at the top and it will show you the pattern you can see the pattern and then you click on the export on the left and it will ask you how you want it exporting. So that's A4, A0, or letter size. So the Waterly pants, the wrap pants that I've chosen here, it does say that you could cut these from a, a large um, rectangle. There is a, a non-pattern alternative to this one. You could just print out the crotch area and that's that you just cut that bit out. As you can see, I particularly like the idea of these Waterly pants, so that's why I've got my measurements in the here. I think this viscose here that I got from a local fabric shop um, this is just a, about two metres of viscose, I think that would be perfect for them. And quite a straightforward, so probably not a good way to gauge whether how accurate the measurements are because they are quite loose fitting, uh, but maybe a good way to sort of experiment with the website, for me anyway. So then you just click onto the documentation part and it tells you what kind of fabric you need and the instructions are there too. You can adjust the length of these and you can also choose what seam allowance you prefer to use. So I thought that was a good one. Also on there is the Huey hoodie and the Diana draped top, which I rather like the look of. And you can see now when I click through that there's a sleeveless version of the Diana draped top. So I thought that was really nice. Be really nice in a, a viscose jersey with that. Unfortunately, there's no dresses on here, but there are bodice blocks. And again, there's a full circle skirt on here and a pencil skirt. So you could perhaps put the two together and draft your own and make your own dress to your own dimensions. That might be fun to do. So if it all sounds a little bit too complex, I'm more than happy to do a tutorial talking you through how the site works. There is a Discord chat group on, on there, so you can ask questions on there. I'm not a Discord user, really, so it's not something that I'm familiar with, but others might be. But there's lots of information on the site as well. It just might be a little bit too different for, for what we're used to, because it's been developed for designers as well. But I think it's well worth a look at. So I hope I've given you some ideas for patterns that are going to fit. Using your own measurements are going to guarantee that, I think. It might be a little bit of extra work, but I think it's definitely worth it. So next, I've got a couple of resources that I wanted to mention before we go. And first one is Sustainability. They have a list of free patterns on their website sorted into garment type. And these are all free patterns. So the garment type categories, so uh, tops, skirts, whatever. And last year she updated it with all the size ranges on there as well. So I thought that was really useful to, to have. And uh, you just click on and you can see what's available. Another one that is specific to plus sizes is from Broad in the Seams. She's one and a half of Moona and Broad and this was being updated quite regularly i don't think it is at the moment uh, you can sort this into garment type or you can start sort it into a pattern company or you can sort it into size range which i thought was really really useful so there's over 80 patterns in that list but also you can go to a part on her website where you can click on patterns over 60 inch hip or over 50 inch hip whatever you're looking for so I thought that was a really useful resource for you. Finally, So Natural Day and is running the Black History Month challenge again this year on Instagram. That ends on February the 28th. If you've taken part in that, there's a list on her website of black-owned pattern designers. 
So these are just links, there's no measurements or anything like that on them, but what I spotted on here uh, is that one has three patterns, and that's Karma Sutra, or Karma Sutra I suppose she's called, and she's got a pattern called Samantha. Uh, I think all of her patterns fit into the same size range, I think they go from a 34 inch bust up to a 48 inch bust, and the maximum hip of 50 inches, but she's got four lovely patterns on there, and the Samantha is made from a stretch cotton, and I've got a stretch cotton in my stash, which is this. Um, and it's just got a little bit of stretch on it. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Um, bought this a couple of years ago, never knowing what to make with it, but I think it might be really, really nice. Let me know if you think it might be a bit too much. I don't. I, I think it'd be really nice with a, a, a jacket with that. Really smart sort of uh, wedding outfit or something like that. So yeah, I thought I'd just mention that one. Obviously, if you're downloading something and entering into the Black History Month, that's February. We don't start until March, so don't forget that. We, you know, if you could do two, you could do one for Black History Month and you could do one for us. We're absolutely fine with anybody double dipping. There's a couple of challenges going on in March, you can enter them all. But obviously we don't want you to start sewing until March. So I'll just remind you of the hashtags. So it's on Instagram on the 31st of March. That's when we, the reveal day is for everybody, including the vloggers. And that is hashtag SoFrugal22. If you want to share a whip or a work in progress, that's hashtag so frugal whip WIP. So look out for Brunchy Girls today. I was doing a video and tomorrow it should be Whitney from Tonkat Stitchery and Anita from Sewing Yoga. And again, the patterns, the playlist, everything is down below. So I hope I've given you some ideas there for plus size sewing. I know So Do It Emma is coming on Monday on the 28th and she will have some as well. Plus sizes with a twist it says, so that's all I know. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you later. Bye. <laughs>